So, uh, essentially, we're, we're going to go ahead, uh, the character stepping up three steps. Is it three steps or two? Three. Three, three. three total? Yeah. And the character's coming in, one, two, three, and they're right. Oh, yeah. And then do the turn. So, the way I've got the camera set up here, essentially shows the stairs here. We can assume that this part here on the floor is the edge. So we go up the one, two, three, and then the other set of stairs would go over this way and down. So we're, we're going to pretend that the jump is going to take place on that side, but I'm not going to jump that way, I'm going to jump down this way. Right. So the idea of being here that what we're going to be doing is, is basically analyzing by physically acting it out. So you can do this two different ways. You can actually act it out, which I encourage you to do, get to a set of stairs, because we have tons of stairs here in this, in this school. Um, go to the stairs and then actually act it out yourself. Do it with a stopwatch as well. Have a stopwatch handy, like I've got a, a stopwatch on my watch, so I can set it up and I can actually go through the process of timing the whole thing out to find out how long it's going to take. So let's just say, just set my watch here. Okay. I'm going to have my one second hold in the beginning, then I'm going to go up the stairs. I'm just going to do whatever. Okay, I'll just do like a normal walk up. Forward. Okay, if your leg goes forward, 
have to counterbalance it by going in the opposite direction. Right? So now, if you choose to do this like first, you have to be careful of the perspective of your camera position in relationship to the character. You may lose your leg on this one side here because it's covered over by this leg here. So in that three-quarter view, if I go like this, most of that action of me going up there is covered over by the perspective of my leg. I might see my knee pop out here and the foot appear on this side, but the actual movement of this is all covered over. So you have to actually animate through the character's leg in order to see it properly. You can't just have the leg appear over here suddenly. You actually have to see that action of the body going in this direction here while the leg goes up into this position here. And then the movement of the body as it comes across this way and getting up into this position so that you can then come down. And the recovery point. So it's very similar to the walk cycle where as you bring your leg up like this, counterbalancing in this direction over here, and then bring the leg up, and then gravity takes over because you're now going this way. You hit and see the cushion point? There's a cushion point there which takes place either on both legs or just one leg. So I can keep this leg fairly straight over here and just go like this, like that. And then I just simply straighten this leg up, pull this one up and drag it, and then I hit and pivot so this leg stays straight again. Okay? So you have to be mindful of what's physically taking place there. The other thing you have to be careful of is this. There is a physical limitation here in that the stairs are solid. So when I take my step, I can't go like this. I can't go through the step in order to reach that point over there, right? I've got to go out and up and down. You can just skirt it so it just goes like that, that much. But I don't want this. <laughs> Comes far too <laughs> That's not right. So we don't want to do that. You want to get an actual clearance where you're taking your foot up, and we get the plant, plant down, and then the cushion, and then a push off, drag, lift, hit, cushion, push off, lift, drag, hit, cushion, and pull up. And then how you choose to make your character spin, your character could come up like this and actually do the turn into the position there if you want to. Or you can get your character as they come up. If they hit with this foot, obviously you've got to then bring this foot around to here, step, step, into that position. If I start with my right leg, which would visually be better, one, two, three, see the angle of my foot, I'm turning because I'm anticipating the fact that I'm going to be turning. I know in my mind that's the direction I'm going to go. So I pivot my foot and bring my other foot this way to plant it, boom and then take this foot up and plant. Okay? So there's a little step step that's taking place. Right? But I mentioned before, if you want to, when your character gets up to the top, you do that. You just pivot on the toe. Okay? So be careful that as you're making your steps up, that you're doing all those actions, getting all the movements taking place, up and down, side to side, and all that stuff. And then when you reach your top point, be careful that you register your feet so that they don't slide, right? I've seen a lot of animation where the feet are sort of like all over the place here, okay? So make sure that your character does that proper movement going through. Okay? <laughs> it's being in a public staircase. So now we get to the point where your character now has to jump off the edge. So let's talk about the, the pause section where the character is getting ready at the top. So once they reach the top, whatever their emotional state was as they went up the stairs, you now must reflect that in their thought process of, now what am I going to do next? Right? So let's say they go up the stairs and they're kind of scared about it. Okay, they get to the top and it's like, okay. And then they anticipate and they jump. Right? Let's say they're excited about it because they went up very happily. They go up to the top. Yeah, I can do this. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Off we go. Okay. So again, that, that little mental process, the Popeye voice that I had in here, yeah, you're going to go, put your head off. <laughs> All that stuff that I'm verbalizing out loud is stuff that's going through my head. I have to allow for that amount of time to take place in the action. So if you just choose to put your character into that pose and pause them there and do the animated hold, 
and then take them out of it into your anticipation and do the jump. Make sure it's for the appropriate amount of time. Right? Now when your character actually does their jump, make sure that it's not too high that it takes them out of the field of vision. Okay? And make sure that the landing is appropriate in the direction and path of action that you want. So obviously you're not going to get this tuck and roll type thing taking place or anything like that. The character's just going to whoop, boom, down hit the ground. But you want to have it so that there's enough, I'll do it this way over here, you want to have it so that there's enough of a, a cushion on the end that it reflects the weight that the character is carrying through the air as they move. So if you've got a very big, large, heavy character, obviously their recovery is going to be completely different than someone who is fit as I am. Okay. So when you get down to the bottom, as you jump, you hit your low point here, but you're not going to stick it like this and lock into this position. Obviously, you want to then come out to your high point and then buckle back down up, recover down, up, and then a final recover where gravity wins at the end. Okay? As your character should settle into a, a nice comfortable position. So avoid having the character when they come down and hitting like this. <laughs> Stop because it's going to look too rock hard. Okay? And it'll also mean that your spine of your character has to shoot at the back of your head. So you want to make sure that there's that pushing action. And same thing with the arms. When you bring your arms down as you land, bring that action through to a final stop position. So you want to get a little bit of a wave action taking place here that it settles to its final position, even with the head. Doing something like that, add a little bit of that into it. Okay. So I'm really looking for a lot of overlapping action in the whole thing, and just the process of thinking it out. So as I mentioned, number one, do it yourself. Okay. Time it out, plan it out, do all the different sections of it. Okay. Get someone else to act it out for you. You act it for them and say, this is the way I want my character to work, and then they act it out for you. Okay, so you're back basically just standing there watching them do it. You could videotape yourself doing it, videotape them doing it, or you can bring in your sketchbook and have them pause for each part of the drawing. So when your character's standing here, do a sketch, a gestural sketch of your character. Use the person as the model, but do draw your character and your proportions in that pose. And then say, okay, the character's going to anticipate with this leg here, so they're going to come up like this, have them hold that position. Draw it for one minute. Find your next key position, your hit down point. Look for the things that are moving, okay? And get the person to hold in that position. So obviously, if you're going to get them to hold into a position like this, or let's say there's more of a cushion on it where you go, like that, don't expect the person to hold this pose for three minutes. Okay, because even at this point, my muscles are starting to fight against me and I'm starting to shake a little bit. Okay, you hold this for like a minute and a half and your thighs are going to be burning. And you're going to be like, you can't hold it any longer. Okay, and I'll mess up your post. So it's really quick gestural sketches, just doing a little thumbnail, basically, of the skeleton of the character, even a stick figure. So you go through the whole process of planning out what all those positions are going to be all the way through, high point, low point, all 